Yeah, so here we are on uh, West... Or no, it's not Westfield. I can never get the name of these maps. Fisherman's Bay. Our team have dominated. There's just one enemy RT left. And on a recent video on the Burt Ace Tanker, I was saying one of the things I don't like about the FE 304 is the fact that, you know, you can't counter RT. Uh, it's very difficult to counter RT. So I've gone for a blind shot. Um, and while at the beginning of games it's very, very difficult to counter RT, one of the things, the really, really nice things about the FE 304 is at the end of games, shot in the mood that moved, or on the move there, but at the end of games you could do things like this. So this is something the Burt can do at the end of games that other RT can't, maybe with the exception of French RT. But um, I'm hoping the uh, AMX 13F3 doesn't die, and he doesn't, he takes out the T3485, and that means I can do this. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. RT on RT action. Hi folks, and welcome to the Ace Tanker for the IKV-103, or the Infantry Cannonwagen 103, the Tier 5 Swedish tank destroyer. And in 1956, uh, while Sweden were installing 105mm guns on the IKV-72, the Tier 3, which I talked about on a recent video, uh, the Tier 3, the IKV-72, it was undergunned originally, and um, they upgunned it, and it was later renamed Upgunned as the IKV-102. But um, Sweden decided to build a new infantry cannon wagon from the ground up while they were upgrading the IKV-72 uh, or the IKV-72 to become the IKV-102 um, and they came up with this. Um, Sweden decided to build, as I say, a new infantry cannon wagon and uh, they called it the IKV-103 um, and it came with a Saab engine uh, which was an actual, actually an aircraft engine and that's why you've got this distinctive vent system on the back it kind of is a little bit characteristic of the of the tank a little bit different from most other tank destroyers so it came with an aircraft engine which basically meant that the crew had far more room in the compartments which meant that they were much much happier um it also came with a 100 millimeter gun now interestingly this gun the 105 millimeter cannon only fired he because this is a uh, infantry cannon wagon that wasn't designed to be a tank destroyer. It was designed to be an infantry support vehicle. So the the 105 millimeter only fired HE, and surprisingly, we don't get HE in game. We we get heat as standard ammo, and we get heat as premium ammo. So um, it wasn't designed for anti-tank capability. It was designed to be anti-infantry, and it wasn't until later in its life cycle um, that it was actually given heat, but it was only given heat for self-defense purposes, not for offensive purposes. So um, yeah, Wargaming taking a little bit of a license regarding the ammo types in-game. I really don't understand why it doesn't get HE, considering it was designed to fire HE in the first place. But um, yeah, anyway, um, 80 of these tanks were built in 1956 and they remained in service up till the 1980s. There were experiments along the way to give them better engines and improve the guns and also attempts to convert it into a reconnaissance vehicle and maybe export it but nothing ever came from any of those. Um, anyway, in-game compared to the tier 4, we've got more mobility with better power to weight ratio. The top speed is 60 kilometers an hour. So one of the issues I had with the tier 4 was it was just a little bit of sluggish, a little bit sluggish and this thing fixed that by getting up to 60 kilometers an hour, but just like the tier four, you usually won't reach 60 kilometers an hour. You'll only get up to around 40, 45 kilometers an hour, but that, that's good enough to get around the map as you're going to see in this game. Uh, the alpha damage is good, but um, not as good as the tier three, surprisingly. Um, you've got 120 penetration, which is very, very good, and 300 damage, which is 70 damage less than the tier three, but uh, much, much more penetration, and it is heat. Um, so, um, and the heat makes it even the penetration even a little bit better because it doesn't lose penetration over distance um, and also the um, shell arc allows you to loop shells over terrain and I think I put a snapshot before one of my recent videos of me doing that so um, yeah the camo rating is very good it's about the best camo rating of any of the tier 5 TDs the gun depression is a very very good 12 degrees so um, nice alpha you know and uh, decent mobility very very good camo rating but there has to be a downside well, 
The tank has absolutely no armor. It's only got 18 millimeters on front compared to 50 millimeters on the tier four, but this has only got 18 millimeters on front. It's only got seven millimeters on the side and it's only got 12 millimeters on the rear. So the tank has absolutely no armor. There goes my mouse. Um, the premium ammo is heat, uh, as I mentioned, and isn't much better than the standard ammunition. So you've got 120 millimeters of penetration with the standard AP or standard heat, and you've got um, 100 140 millimeters of uh, penetration with the premium heat uh, same alpha damage so you only get 20 millimeters more penetration um, and that's not very good so basically what it means is that if a tank has over 140 millimeters of armor you can't hurt them um, and this is a tank that is a tier 5 it will see tier 7s it can see tier 7s with over 140 millimeters of armor or tier 6s even um, and you can't hurt them and and while heat the good thing about heat is it doesn't lose pen over distance. The downside of heat is it's useless if you hit tracks or spaced armor. Uh, you do zero damage. So um, in addition to that, it's got low shell velocity, which means it takes a while for the shot to reach the target. Um, and the aim time, while it isn't terrible at 2.1 seconds, the um, narrow gun arc, the tank is a very, very narrow gun arc. And that means you're constantly, constantly having to go through that 2.1 second aim time. You never seem to be fully aimed in this tank unless enemy tanks are sitting still. So. Um, um, yeah, it's it's a little bit tricky to play. Um, and uh, anything else? Um, yeah, uh, not really. I, I thought the tank was okay, uh, but not great. It's quite situational. I mean, I like the mobility, the alpha, the camo. Um, they're, they're all good, but the armor, absolutely garbage. And the gun can be incredibly frustrating depending on the map and depending on the matchup. And there goes my mouse again. I need new batteries. Anyway, here we go. Uh, we are here on Manaheim Line. It is my ace game and um, this is a game that was actually played at um, the end of the grind actually I was quite close to the end of the grind so it took me a while to ace this one I ground through most of the tank uh, before being able to uh, ace it but um, I ended up having to be a little bit aggressive very very map aware in this in this game so uh, we're just advancing and as I say, there were attempts to turn this thing into a to up engine it and turn it into a reconnaissance vehicle because the mobility was quite good for a Swedish tank and um, that's what I'm going to do here. I've got camo, I've got binox, and I've got a gun rammer just like I had on the tier 3, or tier 4. But uh, we're going to move up and we're going to fast enough to get into these bushes. We're going to sit here. VK2801 on the enemy team was even faster than I was, but we sit here, let our binox pop in, and there we go. We just spotted the IKV103 on the enemy team, and look at this aim time. Slightly better than the tier 3, but fully aimed, stationary target, and this is when this gun is good. So, uh, you can see the camo rating here. Uh, didn't get spotted. Didn't get spotted. That IKV103 was sitting still, and I didn't get spotted. So, then the VK comes out. He does spot me. But uh, we get one shot in, and again, you can see the reverse speed is quite good, the mobility is quite good, we get into cover. Um, but unfortunately, we haven't sent very many tanks down the uh, north of the map, or up the north of the map on the A1, uh, on the 1-2 lines. In the meantime, turret in the head, T1 heavy, sitting still, stationary, 288 damage. That's quite a low roll, but you can look at the minimap, there we go, on the minimap, ELCs and... And lots of tanks. T-34-1 coming down. T-37 coming down. I've got to relocate even though it just got me spotted. And there are two RT on the enemy team now. I should point out, once again, I'm a tier 5 and a tier 7 game, so I'm absolutely bottom tier, but this KV-85 needs help. I've got to ignore the light tanks for the moment. I'm going to use my 12 degrees of gun depression. I'm going to see if I can help the KV-85 at all before he dies. Just need the T-34-1 to come out of uh, cover. And there we go. We're able to loop a shell over the uh, rise into his... Uh, I'd say that was the roof of his engine deck. Um, avoided the turret even though it looked like it hit the turret. But uh, yeah, very, very nice damage on the T-34-1. So this is a tier 5. When it pens, when it can do damage, it can hurt higher tier tanks. The problem is, quite often you're not going to be able to. Um, so basically, um, I'm trying to focus on the T-50, but the T-34-1 has come up. There are two RT on the enemy team, and I know they're probably going to be focused on me, and there we go. Trying to judge, trying to judge long-distance shots with this TD is a pain in the butt because the shell velocity is so slow, the shell arc is so high, and even though you can loop it over terrain, it just wasn't worth it there, but uh, unfortunately, our T-50 has gone down, and our AT-2 is focused on the T-34-1, and I've got to go deal with these light tanks, so... 
They've got a lot of health, and I don't have any armor, and not that much health compared to them, but um, ELC moves up. And what you're going to see here is just the problems with the narrow gun arc. Look at this, edge of my gun arc, edge of my gun arc, and boom. I, ca I can't. I can't track targets. The gun arc is just terrible, but I've got to risk. I know that there's a Type C or T37 here. I'm going to risk that the AT2 can take out the ELC. Um, someone else does, but um, still a T-37, still a T-34-1. RT is busy going for myself and the AT-2. So um, I want to be a little bit careful. I'm a little bit hesitant about poking that corner of the rock because um, I know that RT is pre-aimed here. They've been firing shots already. So um, I know that a lot of tanks haven't been spotted on the enemy team, so I'm just poking up trying to get spots. There we go, and there we go. <laughs> More tanks appearing. So yeah, I knew, I knew they had to be here. I knew they had to be here, so um, unfortunately, even though I was staying arty safe, I was still splashed for 120 damage by the M12. It tracks me, but thankfully I've got a decent Swedish female crew in here, so it's not taking forever for the tracks to come back up. But uh, in the meantime, T37 is moving in and out of cap. There's a Panzer T25 here. Look at the aim time, aim time, aim time, and just the shell velocity is just... Ah! This gun can be so frustrating. Um, so, I, yeah, there's a lot of things I liked about this tank, but uh, there's so much, so much I didn't like, and I thought the Tier 4 was a, so, so much better. Uh, the Tier 4 was a lot more fun to play. It was a lot more competitive than this tank is. This one, while it can be good and it can have good games, it's very, very map-dependent. It's very, very dependent on the tanks on the enemy team. But um, I noticed from the mini-map that the Panzer Jaeger, uh, or the uh, Jag Panzer IV, was probably going to be flanking, so I set up an ambush there. And in the meantime, trying to stay RT safe. Our T-29, it's just two of us now, by the way. It's been two of us for quite some time. Um, the, uh, yeah, T-29 is hull down, trying to stay RT safe, and there we go. Oh, T-37's flanking me, and again, looking at the mini-map, just waiting for him to move forward, trying to help the T-29. And again, missed, missed the shot on the STRV first time round, but managed to get him the second time. That is the uh, T-29 freed up. So now we can swing around, and the rate of fire is not amazing, but we managed to sneak one into the T-37 and swing around. And once again, he's able to pen me because we've got absolutely no armor, but he's driving straight into the T-29 now. Artie's still going for me. But we're going to swing around and again, look at this gun arc. I can't track the enemy tank and the shell velocity and it's just a pain in the butt. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't aiming particularly well there. I didn't didn't predict the T-37's movements, but it's incredibly hard to do on a moving target with this gun. Leave me alone. But um, in the meantime, it is four versus two. It was, I think, about six versus two or seven versus two at one stage, but we pulled it back. T-29's done an amazing job, but he's gone hunting for the T-37. I think that's a mistake. In the meantime, I'm going hunting for the M-12s. Um, tier five and only on 102 health, but I figure, I figure maybe I can one-hit kill the M-12s um, and deal with them in spawn and maybe take some pressure off the... Uh, take some pressure off the T-29, and the AT-2 is exactly where I guessed he would be. Slow-moving tank destroyer, just moved up to the tank destroyer perch at C-7. So, um, I'm, you know, I'm trying, oh, and he's on low health, but um, I'm going to need, I'm going to need a very, very lucky shot into his side in order to do any damage to this guy. So, uh, we're down to 12 rounds. You don't get that much ammunition in this tank, unfortunately, but these rocks and the AT-2 is quite low profile mean that I can't quite get a shot and target. Do I risk it? No. Um, yeah, maybe I should have gone for that shot, but RT has been spotted. Uh, my six heads hasn't gone off, and you can see me adjusting the narrow gun arc here, waiting for RT to poke and constantly moving my hull, constantly having to go through the aim time again. And you're about to see one of the reasons I absolutely hate this gun. Um, okay, there's the M12, so yeah, aim time forever. Oh, I did get spotted. And yeah, accuracy not good enough to loop it over the edge, but I know that there are two RT. I know that I'm probably the ones they're aiming at, so I'm on the move. And our T29 is dealing with the T37, so I'm just going to stay erratic, keep moving. There goes one RT. Wondering if the other RT is going to fire. 
But uh, yeah, they know where I'm coming from now. I've dropped off radar, so I'm going to uh, switch locations. And you can see the mobility. I'm doing 50 kilometers an hour here, going downhill, and now we're on the rough ground. And now we're doing more along the lines of 45 kilometers an hour. That's what you normally expect. Um, so yeah, we're just trying to relocate, trying to help our T29. Don't want him to lose any more hit points. Just let me move up, use my camo rating, use my uh, binocs, spot the enemy tanks, and you take them out from distance, but no, he's just taking a hit from uh, Artie. So in the meantime, I reckon Artie is focused on uh, the T-29, and I get spotted, and that's not good. Okay, so the T-29 took fire. He's getting shot from behind from the T-37 that he allowed to flank him. He uh, did take out an Artie, but now he's taken out the T-37, so good play to him. So now... Now I'm trying to stay on the move because I know that RT or AT2 is aiming at me, but... No, he's not. Okay, that was maybe a misjudgment. Maybe I should have checked in third person before, but um, AT2 is focused on the T29, and here we go. This is the heat. This is the heat. I've moved up using my gun depression. Gonna fire... Oh, no, that's the aim time. All right. <laughs> yeah, he just moved half an inch, and unfortunately I missed, but we're just moving in. Can one hit kill this guy? And we get 327. So we get a high roll, but not as high as we needed. And once again, we can outmaneuver him. And thankfully, T29 has done an amazing job. Took out the um, he took out the AT2. He's on seven kills now. To be honest, I don't notice the fact he's on seven kills. And try to go for a shot using my gun depression over terrain. Miss that. And once again, incredibly frustrating. So almost, almost loaded. T29, come on, dude, shoot him, shoot him. Okay, Artie's aiming at the T29, and T29 misses, and I just move up, and I hit the gun for zero damage, so the M12 has killed the T29, um, which means it's just the two of us left. Um, I did try and let the the the, the uh, T29 get him, but no, no he didn't, but yeah, there's the heat. Zero damage against spaced armor, zero damage against modules, zero damage against tracks, and it's just frustrating as hell. The gun arc, the shell velocity, the aim time, none of them are good, so even though the mobility is quite good, I, ah, I just didn't like the tank very much, if I'm honest. So there we go, um, just the ace, no other medals. This was a game played quite late in my grind. I did finish it, or I did ace it before finishing the grind, but it wasn't that long. I didn't play too many more games in it. Um, it's just an incredibly situational tank. I was a tier five and a tier seven game. We finished top on, or we didn't finish top on XP, actually. We finished second on XP. Our T29 had an amazing game. Unfortunately, he couldn't, couldn't get his eighth kill for the Radleys. I did, did try and give it to him. Did want to stay safe, did try and give it to him, but um, didn't quite manage it. But uh, we finished up and aced the tank with 1185 XP. Uh, 8, 1982, which is ironic, because that's around the time this tank was taken out of service. But um, we did that in damage, four kills as bottom tier, so quite happy. 18 shots fired, only managed to hit 10. So the gun, derpy, it's like using a derp gun, but without the benefit of having HE. So it can be quite annoying. Um, spotted four, damaged eight, destroyed four, uh, 321 assists assistance damage so not a lot of assistance damage and we didn't fire any premium ammo so the ammo costs and repair costs were quite cheap so 34,000 credits overall it was my first game of the day which gave me a very very healthy xp total and made uh, i think i think i was just about finished the grind by the time i played this game so uh, it would have helped a lot to go towards the uh, tier six so anyway uh, thank you guys for uh, watching let me know how you found the ikv 103 was it annoy as annoying as i think it was if i remember back to playing it um i'll see you next time.